John Keats from 1795 to 1821. Keats died in very early age of 25. Keats wrote a letter to his brother George Keats and it was also addressed to his sister Georgiana Keats. In this letter, he talked about poet's imagination, poet's dream, how poetry comes to a poet and negative capability. He is one of the most sensuous poets. He is also known as the one of the last romantic, also known as one of the true romantic poets and also the leader of the second generation romantic poets. Keith says, if poetry comes not as naturally as leaves to a tree, it had better not come at all. Famous epitaph written on his grave is, my name is written on water. Keats used a lot of Grecian words, images and references in his poetry, so he is called the most Hellenic poet. It is also said that Keats was a Greek born in London. Keats came in contact with Grecian literature and life by reading Chapman's translation of Homer. He was very much inspired by Homer. He paid tribute to Chapman by writing a sonnet on first looking into Chapman's Homer. Some of his major works, Endemion, 1818, it has been written in heroic couplet. It is a quest narrative. Keats dedicated this poem to the late poet Thomas Chatterton. Story is based on the Greek myth of Endymion, where a moon goddess named Selene falls in love with a shepherd. Keats changed the name of the goddess to Cynthia. She fell in love with the shepherd. Poem is divided into four books. Book one deals with Endymion's dream vision. Book two deals with the journey of underworld. Endymion goes for the journey to the underworld and finds Venus and Adonis. Book three, he goes in sea and here he helps a god, Glaucus, who became a slave and taken in custody by a witch, Sirs. He helps Glaucus to get free. In book four, he found another girl, she is Indian maid. And taking her, he goes to meet the goddess but realizes his love for Indian maid. Together with the Indian maid, he flies to the Mount Olympus where the goddess lives, but he rejects the goddess Cynthia and starts living with Indian maid. But soon he gets bored of her and starts missing the goddess again. Here he gets to know that goddess Cynthia became an Indian maid in disguise. Opening line. A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Closing line, there is not one, no, no, not one, but thee. It is one of the most severely criticized poetry. Though Keats called it one of his best works, Keats says, Endymion was trial of my power of imagination. John Keats said, it is not without a feeling of regret that I make it public. Isabella or the Port of Basil, 1818, a narrative poem adopted from story in Boccaccio's De Cameron, a tale of young woman whose family intend to marry her but who is in love with a Lorenzo, one of her brother's employees. When the brothers learn of this, they murder Lorenzo and bury his body. His ghost informs Isabella in a dream. She exhumes the body and buried the head in part of basil, which she tends ob obsessively while pining away. Hyperion, a fragment. It was an unfinished epic because Keats himself got bored, so he stops writing. It deals with the war of Titans and Olympians. So the titans who lost to the Olympians, they are in sad and despair. Keats have reflected their feelings. Keats wanted to complete it, but he left it. Keats says that the work is full of too many Miltonic inversions. Fall of Hyperion, a dream, a vision. Hyperion, once it got left unfinished, Keats tried to complete it once again, and he has written the sequel. Fall of Hyperion. 
it is much better in content. The book is divided into three parts. It starts with the lyrical argument where the poet tries to tell whether the poetry is a dream or a reason. Here goddesses, Moneta talks to the poet about the nature of poetry, reason and aim of life. When the poet himself passed all the queries, then Moneta allowed the poet to witness the titans and Hyperians. The Eve of St. Agnes, 1820. It is a romantic narrative poem written in 42 Spenserian stanzas. It is set in Middle Ages where the couples are celebrating the evening of St. Agnes Day. The superstition around the Eve of St. Agnes is that if a virgin performed the proper rituals of St. Agnes Eve, she would dream of her future husband. It is a poem talks about Porphyro and Madeline, two young lovers who decide to elope to escape their families who are not having good relations with each other. La Belle, Dame Sans Mercy, 1819. The translation of this French title is Beautiful Lady Without Mercy. It is a ballad. The poem starts with an unidentified speaker who asks the knight what has happened to him. The knights tell him that he had met a beautiful lady. He made that lady sit on his horse and lady led him to her cave. And there she sung him to sleep and the knight gets nightmare dream in the sleep. When the knight woke up, he found that he is lying on the cold hillside and that is where the poem ends. He finally tells the speaker that all the prince and warriors who were around him have told him that he was enslaved by the beautiful lady. It combines two poetical forms, ballad and lyric. Lamia, 1820, a narrative poem. Ode to Autumn, one of the greatest ode of 1819. It Make autumn look beautiful. Poem describes a progression through the season from the late maturation of the crops to the harvest and to the last days of autumn when winter is nearing. Poem describes three aspects of autumn fruitfulness, labor, and ultimate decline. Autumn is represented as someone who conspires ripen fruit, harvest, and makes music. Wood on a Grecian urn, 1890. Grecian urn is referred to as Salvan historian by Keats. Anything which is related to wood or having characteristics of wood is called Salvan. The poem focuses on two major scenes. First, lover eternally pursues a beloved. Second, blazers going to perform a sacrifice. Important lines, heard melodies are sweet, but those unheard are sweeter. Important line, beauty is truth, truth beauty, that is all. Ye know on earth and all ye need to know. Ode and Indolence, 1819. Indolence stands for avoidance or laziness. Ode on Melancholy, 1819. In this he is treating melancholy as goddess. And the important line, she dwells with beauty, beauty that must die. Ode to Nightingale, 1819. It's a classic work. It's a real experience. He was under the plume tree in his own garden, Spaniard. Speaker claims to be in love with the peace that comes with death. Opening lines, my heart as is, and a drowsy numberless pains, my sense, as though of hamlock I had drunk. One more important line. I have been half in love with his full death. Thank you.